Um, last year, um, my co-founder and I presented. It was a great opportunity. Um, we, uh, <clears throat> we have some funny stories, you know, and the importance of, of the launch conference, and we'll, I'll get to the update here shortly. But uh, we're first-time entrepreneurs, and our very first VC pitch, and I feel like I should tell that not to the first 30 rows, but the guys at the very back, those are the guys at the demo pit, uh, the guys who are starting uh, businesses and starting companies, and they've probably got similar stories as, as, as I have, but I want to talk to them for a minute about our very first VC pitch. Um, we came into the Bay Area, and uh, <clears throat> we got to our meeting a few minutes early to make sure that we were there in time, and the, the VC was late. Eh, not that big of a deal. We understand that people are busy. We sat down and we started pitching. We got through the pitch in about 30 minutes, and the VC stood up and he said, where's my checkbook? Just kidding. And then he walked out of the room. <laughs> and uh, it, it, uh, it, it, it messed up my mind for probably a good, good couple days, like, like, whoa, what happened? Like, why, you know? Yeah, like, we didn't get any feedback and, or anything like that, but uh, we persevered, and we ended up getting accepted into launch, and we had this opportunity to present this crazy, crazy idea that uh, the cloud and data centers were um, inefficient when it came to the data that users were creating with their smartphones, photos and videos, and even um, some of the other commercial data that they, that they store in the cloud. And if we were to take the data center out of the cloud and put it into a small little device, we could change the world. We could change how the world stores data. We could change the environmental impact that data centers have storing consumer data. Uh, it was a crazy idea. And, and no wonder that first VC just kind of chuckled and said, where's my checkbook? And, and then walked out the room, and, and that was that. Um, because we were crazy. But to the guys in the back who are also um, digging through this week and, and really trying to, to create traction and, and share their ideas and their passions. Keep going. You'll have uh, a lot of lows and you'll have a few highs, but you just keep going. Um, maybe you have to pivot, maybe you have to change your idea, maybe you have to change some tact, but, but if you really believe in yourself and you have that reality distortion field, you just keep going until, uh, until you find other people who believe in you. And that's why Launch Conference was so important for us, because it really did, uh, we had a prototype. Uh, my my co-founder came up here, and he prototyped um, from his laptop the simulation of multiple Space Monkey devices storing files to each other and, and retrieving them back. And that's all it was. It was just an idea and a prototype. Um, today, uh, we also came on stage with a prototype of the Space Monkey device. I don't have my, I don't have a prototype in hand with me, and that's because it's actually running in my house. And <laughs> to do this demo, I have to be able to uh, to do that. So here goes, right? Live demo, real product. If I can get some audio, that would be great from my laptop. Said I was very amused. I started throwing bits. She started throwing back mid-range. But when I was actually streaming from my Space Monkey device in my house, from my iTunes. I don't. I only have a friend. Come on. Come on. So launch is our friend. And we are excited to show you where, what we've been up to. That was uh, my Space Monkey device. If I go to iTunes and I go to Preferences, and I change my, uh, I go to the advanced settings. Once it loads here for a second, you can change your location, change it to iTunes, uh, which is all on my Space Monkey device. Click open, and, and you're done. And that was actually streaming from my little house in Salt Lake City um, without any issues. Um, you can also uh, access our web client. So if you want to access the uh, desktop client, let me show you that first. We have this cute, adorable little helmet here, just uh, similar to a competitor of ours, I guess. Um, you can open the Space Monkey folder. Boom. Let's see, we got a couple of them opened up. Maybe because I had one open already. Um, let me close this one. And here are hundreds of gigabytes of folders uh, and data that I have stored on, on my device. 
it's replicated to the, the, the other storage network. I'm going to go and actually pull my slide deck. You know, most people would be worried about not having this set up and ready to go, but because we're demoing the product, it's okay. So I can go to uh, our public relations folder. Hopefully my co-founders who have a share on this folder aren't st stuffing photos, inappropriate photos in my, my shared folder while I do this. <laughs> like uh, puppies, what is that? Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> British Bulldog? That's not adorable. Sorry, guys. We'll, we'll, open, uh, we'll open this. Hopefully they don't stuff any more stuff in my, uh, my collaborative Space Monkey <laughs> folder. Okay, you've got to try it somewhere, right? <laughs> this is the Space Monkey device. We are excited to announce that uh, by the end of uh, May, we'll have 5,000 of these units available, uh, and we'll be just blowing up our storage network. They're a beautiful device. We have it in white. We have it in black. Um, we also can tell you that, well, this keynote doesn't want to work. Man, I love it. All right, here we are. Here is a quick uh, a view of, of the Space Monkey Network in our neighborhood in uh, Salt Lake City. We have about a half a petabyte of, of available storage on our network. Uh, we have hundreds of people using the product from California to, to New York, from Texas to Minnesota. Uh, we track everything. Uh, the last year we've spent a lot of time on making sure that we can manage each device. If a device fails, we want to know about it before the customer does. In fact, we know that we will because as a customer you'll use the product and if the device gets turned off, you'll be able to access your data from the storage network without, without a problem. Uh, we track uh, CPU usage, memory usage, how many objects it's stored to the, to the network. Um, we just know a ton of things about the devices itself. Uh, we, you know, one of the things that, uh, that I've talked about with my investors most recently was when we did Mosey back in 2006 and 2007, the landscape was so different. We had uh, a Windows client and uh, a back-end distributed storage system in a couple of colos. And, you know, we raised the same amount of money that we have at Space Monkey to date, and um, we were able to launch. Uh, for us at Space Monkey, it's different. We've got to have a web client, we've got to have a Mac client, Windows client, Linux client, we've got to have iOS, Android, um, and eventually a micro Microsoft phone uh, support. And then, of course, all the different web browsers that we have to support. And it's taken us a year, but we're excited. May will be our public launch, uh, where the devices will be available. And all those different platforms will be available as well in, uh, in the May time frame. So that's Space Monkey. You can store all your photos and videos. You get a terabyte of cloud storage uh, for 10 bucks a month. A lot of people have asked us, well, what does the device cost? <coughs> the device is free. It's part of the subscription. Uh, we want you to know that, like, if the device fails, we will replace it. That's something you never have to worry about again. Uh, and you can share folders, share photos and videos with friends and family, collaborate documents with co colleagues. Uh, all that stuff is protected and, and, and replicated in, in, uh, in Space Monkey. Great. Woo. Okay. So, um, it's been a year. Yep. We don't have the product yet. Yep. What took so long? And uh, tell us your entrepreneurial story. I'm going to stand by this speaker. Yeah, yeah, sure. We thought we'd have the product by now. What's taking so long? Yeah, it's uh, hardware is hard. Um, I, sh I probably should have showed a picture of a, a tiny little diode that, uh, um, you know, wasn't working, and, and it took us four or five weeks to diagnose that on the, on the, on the PCB that this little diode um, was giving us fits in the power. Um, building the distributed storage system and making sure the devices are reliable and that we can fix them on the fly, that's a lot of work. Um, we're doing what Google and Microsoft and others do in the data center, but we're doing it across tens of thousands of devices to scale. So it just takes time to build great technology, and we'll be out in May. And since the time you launched, the price of Dropbox got cut in half, Yeah, correct? sure. Um, so where does that put you competitively? Dropbox today for a terabyte is how much? Yeah. Space Monkey is how much for a yeah, terabyte? Yeah. So Dropbox, you can go get uh, you can go get a terabyte for 800 bucks or so. Um, a year. A year. Yeah, a year. Um, I think we're 120 a year. So 8x. Uh, yeah, 8x so and seven or 8x. Yep. And then there's a bunch of performance issues. 
we're faster, we're more reliable because of the network and how far it's distributed, so you won't what is the speed get outages. Difference? Speed difference is right now we're clocking at, at over 15x. We think we can get to about 60x faster than, than Dropbox. Why? Uh, well, for a couple reasons. One, we've got local storage, so if you're in your home and you want to stream a video, you're going to go over your local network and it's going to be really fast. Um, if you're outside of your network and you request a file, we have the ability to uh, essentially grab them from nodes or devices out in the network that have your file and we can take the aggregate bandwidth and stream them back to you. So. Great. So uh, some great judges up here, Stefan, Rachel, Dave. Oh, yeah, we hey, welcome back from Arizona. And Rowan is back. Great to see you, pal. Um, some thoughts uh, on Space Monkey. Some of you saw it last year. I'm sure many of you are aware of it. I'm not sure if anybody on the panel invested in it. Okay. So what are your thoughts on Space Monkey and where they're at? Well, I, th I would say, oh, wow, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Stefan's going to make me cry. Watch. No, we discussed this backstage later. Uh, I, I think the, the biggest thing, the question I would have is just how much customer demand is there for a faster solution? Like, is, is, is today's stuff fast enough? And yeah. is it good enough? To, we give, you know, not to plug us, our stuff, but we give 7 to 25 gigs away for free. Sure. Uh, and so does Google and everyone else. So is speed really the main problem people have with the online no, storage? No, speed is, speed is a luxury. Um, it really comes down to space. Mm. It, it, it comes down to how many people can afford 800 bucks. I mean, sure. maybe this first half of the room can eight, afford 800 <laughs> bucks for a terabyte, but the guys in the back there, if I came into their little startups and said, hey, here's a terabyte of collaborative storage for 10 bucks a month, yeah. they're all going to just be like, give it to me. So it, it really is, it comes down to, um, you know, my ability to store more data and even share. So if I have a, you know, HD video that I've taken of my kid's birthday, mm -hmm. how do I get that to grandma and grandpa? Mm -hmm. I can't email it. It's too big for Dropbox, at least my free account. Mm -hmm. So I drop it into Space Monkey into the shared folder. Family has access to it right away. So it's good. I want to hear from Rowan. We remember how much crap he gave us last year. So <laughs> I'm impressed. So I, I want to see the product. I want to get it in my house. What was the crap you gave it. him last year? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I was complaining about the fact that I was worried that you guys were going to suck up all my bandwidth, yeah. storing other people's files on, my, on the hard drives yeah. inside so my house. How many so I'd love to talk that about that. Out? Yeah, I'd love to talk about that. Um, I have a few guys on the front row who are investors. I apologize for the first month or two. Um, but yeah, we. We, unlike a lot of devices inside of people's homes who try to use QoS or they, they say, oh, well, I put my packets as a high priority, Space Monkey is the opposite. We actually intentionally make our packets low priority. Uh, from the kernel, we put in TCP LP, and basically everything that comes out of Space Monkey is low priority. Do not stomp on that. And then we have other tools where we can actually set bandwidth constraints if you only want a little bit of amount. Uh, in the future, we can even go to, okay, well, let's look at patterns and, and determine one of the lowest used patterns of bandwidth in somebody's home and, and go with that. But no, it's, it's a great point. And my kids were punished because I had like five space monkeys and they couldn't get <laughs> Netflix for like a month. So. And, and how many units are in the wild right now? I have one in my office. Yeah, you got one in your office. Uh, we've got, uh, I want to say about 250 or so units. Um, we'll grow that to about 500 before May. And, and, you know, we, as a hardware startup, and this is maybe some advice for startups, is that, you know, people weren't readily willing to give us money until we could prove the software worked on the hardware. So we went to Best Buy and we, like, bought a bunch of Seagate devices. We hacked them and rooted them, put our own software on them. And, and that's what we're using for our alpha to prove the concept. And it's worked out great. So if you can find shortcuts in the hardware world, do it. Well, and so have you guys, you guys are still pursuing the, we're going to have a device. Yep. But since it's been taking so long, do you think that maybe it's time to say, uh, we should let you uh, BYOD? Um, Bring your own device? BYOHD? I, yeah, I think our <laughs> device is still very beautiful. And, and then because, of the because it's a subscription and it's an asset to the company, a lot like Comcast or DirecTV, where if you cancel your subscription, you delete your data, and then you just ship the device back, it's done. Um, you don't have to worry about it. Um, but would so, you already be in market with a million users right now if it had been no, BYOD? No, 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 no. The hardware is not the thing that's taken. So, I mean, distributed storage systems is a lot of work. I mean, we're combining the best in peer-to-peer -peer technology, the best in security, as Rowan pointed yeah. out last year. So when year. you plug one of these into a network, if I put a terabyte worth of data in the test, how long does it take to send out and back up without destroying my bandwidth? Yeah, um, you know, it, it, for an average user. So, just like um, like if you were putting a terabyte in in, in a competitor's system, uh, it's limited to your 
your okay, I'm your, on a your cable bandwidth. modem. I use it for yeah, five so hours few, a day. So a few months would, would, would get it all up there and, and using it. A few so, months? Yeah. Which Even is, if I only use my 25 gig well, cable modem five well, hours a day? So two points. One, you'll get it to the device in, in a couple of days. It'll be there. It'll be fast. You can close your laptop or throw away your disk drive. And in the, in the background, it'll quietly start redistributing it out into the network. So that's the, that's the convenient piece is a lot of people have laptops and they have to sit there and go, OK, I've got to run 100 gigs worth of backup and I can't close my laptop where it stops. This is quick and fast, and then it replicates out to the network. Got it. More questions from the panel? Yeah. Dave? So I'm kind of poking that a little bit. So you're saying it might take up to three months for the terabyte to be pushed out. So I'm assuming as a consumer of the product when I first get it, I won't necessarily, I guess I'm, I'm harping on speed because I think speed's a cool uh, asset you have here. But I won't get that full benefit likely for a few months after I per purchase it. Yeah, you'll have, you'll have one copy on the, on the device as a local cache. But to get the full backup benefit, it'll take some time to, to make sure that we don't trample on your Netflix and that we're working in, in off hours and things like that. And it just takes time to get it out there. No difference than anything else in the cloud today. Except that you're, you're pitching the benefit as it's distributed, therefore it's faster. So yep. I, I don't get the benefit for a few months, which just as a consumer messaging point, it could be sure. a bit of a challenge, right? Because yep. yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not getting the speed you, that you least, promised me. You at least have a secondary copy yeah. on the device, and yeah, that's yeah, the key piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Let's hear it. Oh, and so when exactly are we going to get our units? When are we going to be able to buy it? Uh, you're going to be able to buy it just before May, but units should be coming out in May. Wow. Yep. Okay, let's hear it for Space Monkey. Great update.